This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Frank Woodward. The Tale of Timmy Tiptoes from The Great Big Treasury of Beatrix Potter by Beatrix Potter. Chapter 16 For Many Unknown Little Friends, Including Monica. Once upon a time, there was a little, fat, comfortable gray squirrel called Timmy Tiptoes. He had a nest thatched with leaves in the top of a tall tree, and he had a little squirrel wife called Goody. Timmy Tiptoes sat out, enjoying the breeze. He whisked his tail and chuckled, Little wife, Goody, the nuts are ripe. We must lay up a store for winter and spring. Goody Tiptoes was busy pushing moss under the thatch. The nest is so snug. We shall be sound asleep all winter. Then we shall wake up all the thinner, when there is nothing to eat in springtime replied prudent timothy when timmy and goody tiptoes came to the nut picket they found other squirrels were there already timmy took off his jacket and hung it on a twig they worked away quietly by themselves every day they made several journeys and picked up quantities of nuts they carried them away in bags and stored them in several hollow stumps near the tree where they had built their nest when these stumps were full, they began to empty the bags into a hole high up a tree that had belonged to a woodpecker. The nuts rattled down, down, down inside. How shall you ever get them out again? It is like a money box, said Goody. I shall be much thinner before springtime, my love, said Timmy Tiptoes, peeping into the hole. They did collect quantities because they did not lose them. Squirrels who bury their nuts in the ground lose more than half, because they cannot remember the place. The most forgetful squirrel in the wood was called Silvertail. He began to dig, and he could not remember. And then he dug again and found some nuts that did not belong to him, and there was a fight. And other squirrels began to dig. The whole wood was in commotion. Unfortunately, just at this time, a flock of little birds flew by, from bush to bush, searching for green caterpillars and spiders. There were several sorts of little birds, f twittering different songs. The first one sang, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? And another sang, A little bit of bread and no cheese! A little bit of bread and no cheese! The squirrels followed and listened. The first little bird flew into the bush where Timmy and Goody Tiptoes were quietly tying up their bags, and it sang, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? Timmy Tiptoes went on with his work without replying. Indeed, the little bird did not expect an answer. It was only singing its natural song, and it meant nothing at all. But when the other squirrels heard that song, they rushed upon Timmy Tiptoes and cuffed him and scratched him and upset his bag of nuts. The innocent little bird, which had caused all the mischief, flew away in a fright. Timmy rolled over and over and then turned tail and fled toward his nest, followed by a crowd of squirrels shouting, Who's been digging up my nuts? They caught him and they dragged him up the very same tree where there was the little round hole, and they pushed him in. The hole was much too small for Timmy Tiptoe's figure. They squeezed him in dreadfully. It was a wonder they didn't break his ribs. We will leave him here till he confesses, said Silvertail Squirrel, and he shouted into the hole, Who's been digging up my nuts? Timmy Tiptoe's made no reply. He had tumbled down inside the tree upon half a peck of nuts, belonging to himself. He lay quite stunned and still. Goody Tiptoes picked up the nut bags and went home. 
She made a cup of tea for Timmy, but he didn't come and didn't come. Goody Tiptoes passed a lonely and unhappy night. Next morning she ventured back to the nut bushes to look for him, but the other unkind squirrels drove her away. She wandered all over the wood, calling, Timmy Tiptoes, Timmy Tiptoes, oh, where is Timmy Tiptoes? In the meantime, Timmy Tiptoes came to his senses. He found himself tucked up in a little moss bed, very much in the dark, feeling sore. It seemed to be underground. Timmy coughed and groaned because his ribs hurt him. There was a chirpy noise, and a small striped chipmunk appeared with a nightlight and hoped he felt better. It was most kind to Timmy Tiptoes. It lent him its nightcap, and the house was full of provisions. The chipmunk explained that it had rained nuts through the top of the tree. Besides, I found a few buried. It laughed and chuckled when it heard Timmy's story. While Timmy was confined to bed, it enticed him to eat quantities. But how shall I ever get through that hole unless I thin myself? My wife will be anxious. Just another nut or two nuts. Let me crack them for you, said the chipmunk. Timmy Tiptoes grew fatter and fatter. Now, Goody Tiptoes had set to work again by herself. She did not put any more nuts into the woodpecker's hole, because she had always doubted how they could be got out again. She hid them under a tree root. They rattled down, down, down. Once, when Goody emptied an extra big bagful, there was a decided squeak, and the next time Goody bought another bragful, a little striped chipmunk scrambled out in a hurry. It's getting perfectly full up downstairs. The sitting room is full, and they are rolling along the passage, and my husband, Chippy Hacky, has run away and left me. What is the explanation of these showers of nuts? I'm sure I beg your pardon. I did not know that anybody lived there, said Miss Goody Tiptoes. But where is Chippy Hacky? My husband, Timmy Tiptoes, has run away, too. I know where Chippy Hacky is. A little bird told me, said Mrs. Chippy Hacky. And she led the way to the woodpecker's tree, and they listened at the hole. Down below there was a noise of nutcrackers, and a fat squirrel voice and a thin squirrel voice were singing together. My little old man and I fell out. How shall we bring this matter about? Bring it about as well as you can, and get you gone, you little old man. You could squeeze in through that little round hole, said Goody Tiptoes. Yes, I could, said the chipmunk, but my husband, Chippy Hacky, bites. Down below, there was a noise of cracking nuts and nibbling, and then the fat squirrel voice and the thin squirrel voice sang, for the diddle um day day diddle dum die day diddle diddle dum day then goody peeped in at the hole and called down timmy tiptoes oh fie timmy tiptoes and timmy replied is that you goody tiptoes why certainly he came up and kissed goody through the hole but he was so fat that he could not get out chippy hacky was not too fat but he did not want to come he stayed below and chuckled. And so it went on for a fortnight, till a big wind blew off the top of the tree and opened up the hole and let in the rain. Then Timmy Tiptoes came out and went home with an umbrella. But Chippy Hacky continued to camp out for another week, although it was uncomfortable. At last a large bear came walking through the wood. Perhaps he also was looking for nuts, he seemed to be sniffing around. <laughs> Chippy Hacky went home in a hurry. And when Chippy Hacky got home, he found he had caught a cold in his head, and he was more uncomfortable still. And now Timmy and Goody Tiptoes keep their nut store fastened up with a little padlock. And whenever that little bird sees the chipmunks, he sings, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? But nobody ever answers. End of chapter 16